right, good evening and welcome to CDC P CDC PH live stream number three. I'm Mari Kaimwa and with me are Francis Abraham and Doc Iggy Agbayani. Good evening po sa inyong lahat. Good evening sa inyo, Good Francis. evening. Good evening sa inyo lahat. <laughs> oh, we just Hi. got... Uh, Sige pa. Mga concerned. Mga concerned. <laughs> We have many more concerns than we're telling you about right now. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> including mo, uh, uh, yes, an unfortunate, including what? Ano, no? yung unfortunate na naputol na eksena, na naputol Correct. na ano, sequence. Na, Correct. Na, na Kasi nga, show. Nga ho, yes, tonight, uh, earlier, 7 o'clock, we went on show dun sa Puget Vloggers, sa DZRH, uh, ang mga concerned doctors and citizens. Tapos at the 13th minute mark or 14th, bigla tayong nawala off air. Uh, we are not imputing anything na malicious about the incident except that Converge uh, was the problem, I think. No? So, uh, the internet we service were, provider. We, yeah, yeah, service provider. And now, uh, we are trying to retrieve the, the rest of the show and hopefully it will be aired. However, the uh, producer and the owner of uh, DZRJ was Bea Hasindo, a very nice lady. She was very apologetic about the incident and uh, she's, she's currently on top of it and talking to Converge about it. And uh, she said, you know, Francis, you have to do that show again uh, after Christmas. Maybe no one will want to do it on the 24th <laughs> to welcome our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but uh, we'll do it after uh, uh, um, welcoming our Savior and uh, we'll do it as a service to the Filipino people. We will. We were talking about lies, di ba? Okay, Chinese kasama niyo no? si Doc Homer Lim and si Sir Nonoy Oplas and Sir Geoffrey Balse, correct? At saka ikaw. Uh, well, late na ako nakaano kasi medyo nag-technical uh -huh. problem, problem din ako. Eh. Um, what do you, um, were you able to ask uh, Sir Geoffrey if he's joining us here? Well, yeah, no, I, I gave him the link. Uh, Homer just meant, uh, just to know that the link is invalid. Oh, Can sorry, you I'll send it kindly again. share it with him? Maybe share yeah. I yeah. shared the link with uh, with Joffre. So in in any case, uh, Doc Iggy, ano? Yeah. Anong gusto mong uh, since at dito ka at first placer ka? Anong ano? Pag-usapan natin well, uh, <laughs> mga lie. Yeah, I, I was saying uh, I think natanggal tayo, nakat tayo because uh, we now matter <laughs> to someone big. We matter to converge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is, matter to God, matter to someone big. Correct. They, they're noticing us, so yeah. that's why maybe these things are happening for for a reason. Correct. So yun. Habang hindi tayo natis Doc Homer to, uh, did you send the the ecom link ba or the the, the you sent the ecom link ano, Francis? I sent the ecom yeah. link. Oh, it worked. Right. I used that. Oh, okay. I used the link. There's Doc Homer. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hi, Doc. Uh, hi, go. hi. Uh, hi. Did you miss that? Nandiyan ka. Baka may kampana dyan, Homer. Ah. Oh, mamaya ulit, mamaya ulit. Mamaya Every 30 ulit. minutes. Ah. Oh, 30 uh, minutes. Every 30 minutes. Alam mo, uh, alam mo na ba, Homer, na tayo ay nakat? Dito What do you mean? Uh, after 13 <laughs> minutes and 55 <laughs> seconds, naputol yung feed. Uh -huh. Tapos. Lalo na nung nagsasalita ka na about hydroxychloroquine, nakat. Hindi nga, totoo ba yan? Oo, oh, totoo. Oh, totoo. So, sasabihin mo na, this, yun, naputol. This drug, naputol. <laughs> Pinutol or naputol? I will. Yeah, diba sabi, nowadays you can't say. Uh, nowadays you can't say, but DZRJ, I know, hindi nila puputulin yan at uh, Mambea did not uh, cut us. No, they, they, I'm sure it was not RJ's uh, It was not the station's fault. Si uh, and they Soros want us to do it again. <laughs> they want us to do it again. Shareholders is Soros. Of, it's Radio Bandido. They want the bandidos on again to expose <laughs> the lies that are being spread in social media and, uh, and media as well. Led by certain Dr. Evils. Ah, no. Joke lang. Uh, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Evils. <laughs> O baka Joke pwede lang, natin i-recap. Recap natin para sa mga viewers natin. Recap. Na, Sige, recap mo, Mari. Uh, eh, eh, <laughs> Naano ko eh. Huwag mo kung ano. Okay, we have uh, <laughs> okay. Joffrey joining us. Good Joffrey. evening. Yeah, but, but ano, tama ka kayo. There's really a uh, lies go coming out there, mga misinformation. And that's actually been my favorite topic for two months now since we started this. I noticed there is a war of information out there. So there is fact, and someone is coming out with 
counterfact. And it's not fact, of course. So we really have to fight, fight. Okay, we've now we, been joined we by fight. our other economist, Sir Geoffrey Manse. Oh, si Geoffrey, ano ito? Ano ito eh, si Geoffrey? Mahilig rin ito sa ano, conspiracy. At saka sa kanya hindi na conspiracy. <laughs> Totoo na lang. Eh. Ako, nag-aano yata, nag-freeze yata ang video niya. So, so, eh, totoo video naman eh. So before, di ba, before the... Uh, before the vaccines were out, they were saying the conspiracy theory yung uh, vaccine passport. So now, with the vaccines out, right. you need the vaccine passport. That's right. Really okay. crazy. Passport, which means you cannot travel without a vaccine? Yes. Oh my God. That's straight out of the Bible, Mari. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the passport, well, I'm a passport to buy one, pero. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have the mark. You have to have the mark. The mark of the beast. Okay, so, wala pa si Sir Nonoy, but uh, if you can just recap for our audience what was previously okay. discussed. Okay. The, not just the, no, siguro, from the, the first 13 minutes, tapos, uh, we can start from there na lang. Diba? Para mag oh, okay. natin dito sa show. Siguro, the first 13 minutes was about uh, Dr. Iggy Bayani talking about the uh, Ano ba? The RT-PCR? Ano yeah, bang yeah, the RT-PCR. The RT-PCR oh. being a flawed, flawed test because uh, down to the very identification or isolation of the virus, they have been very flawed in, in doing that. And it's been reviewed because they didn't do a proper peer review when it first came out uh, way back in June 2021. Not well pre-reviewed. So lately, they did a very good peer review, and they found ten flaws of identifying the right RNA or the right set of uh, uh, RNA markers to make mm -hmm. a gold standard. Hindi talaga siya gold standard because pwede ba naman mag for false positive bang? You cannot have gold a false standard. positive in a, in a gold standard. And as we've been Pero saying all along, sabi ng gold standard, di ba sabi ni Dr. Salvanya? Sila, standard, sila yeah. nagsasabi na gold standard. <laughs> but it's never been truth na a lab test can be a gold standard. It should be a combination okay. of things. As we've always discussed, uh, uh, symptoms, prevalence of the the disease, plus, plus a test. That's a gold standard. Okay. Okay, see, Sir Nonoy is trying to get in, but there's a there's a four guest limit. A four okay, guest so limit I'm going second. to go. I'm going to get out for a while. I need to solve and look for our footage. In the meantime, uh, right. Mary, can you, uh, no, can you just uh, you know, oh, oh, see, see, see. Okay. hang loose? <laughs> so I'll, I'll leave for a while. See. How do I leave now? I'll take care of that. All right. Okay, so, thank you, you Mary. Right. And guys, thank you very much. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. Hey, babalik okay. ka pa, di ba? Oh, babalik ako. Okay. Pero okay. relax muna. Okay, okay, ayusin ko lang kung nakuha natin yung footage na natira okay. doon sa ating show. At uh, kailangan ayusin ko yan ngayong gabi. Maraming okay. salamat po. Sige. I love you guys. And you <laughs> doctors are tremendous. Yes, I love you guys. Bye-bye. Right. Okay. Where were you? Sorry. Um, eto na si... Si... Sir Nonoy. Sir Nonoy. Yes, there you are. Sorry. Top last. Hi. Our economist, our economist expert. Oops. Oops. So, may hirap. Hindi magaling yung technician. Okay. Who am I missing? Ah, si ano? Si ano pala nandito? Okay, si... Geoffrey. Balse. Okay, where is... There he is. Okay. Sign. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, the gang's all here except for Mr. Francis Abraham, who joins later. Sir Nonoy, welcome. Francis. Hi, good evening. I I am going to do the same thing that the Francis just did. Uh, the first uh, 13 and 55 seconds of the show that you did on Pugat Bloggers is all that was uh, streamed to YouTube Recorded. after that. Yeah, yeah uh, the rest of it is, uh, <laughs> we don't know where it went. But hopefully the, the rest of it will have been recorded by RJ. And so either we do the show again that you just did on Pugad uh, Bloggers or they can re uh, stitch the two together and re-air it as a, maybe as a replay. But anyway, we're, we're picking up uh, from the discussion from where you left off earlier. Uh, and we're recapping for our audience. Kung, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 
Doc Iggy, where were you, you at? Yeah, you? so we were saying that this RT-PCR test is making the numbers bigger than it is. It is making a diagnosis of cases that are not really COVID, uh, uh, true COVID cases. And it apparently it will also say that some of these tests that they account to COVID may not be actually COVID because flawed yung test. Eh. So that's the problem with what you call false positive. You're making a diagnosis of COVID even if they're not. Pero hindi ba sabi ni Dr. So, Edsel Salvanya na RT uh, is the gold standard for testing? Yeah, actually uh, he's he's saying kasi that because sabi niya, we have the RNA, the RNA belongs to this uh, virus, so therefore it's the gold standard. But now peer-reviewed studies of of uh, how they I tried to I tried to isolate this virus by using certain RNAs. May flow kasi hindi naman pala tama yung pinagkuhanan nila. They did not actually get the actual virus itself to present these RNAs. So they got parang zombie. It's like a, uh, uh, no, it's like yung uh, ano yung monster na pinagbubuo na iba yung parts. Frankenstein. Frankenstein. So you have a picture with Frankenstein virus and you don't really know what it looks like. Yung tunay na, uh, ano. And so they're saying, na, oh, Eh, meron siyang screw dito. Eh, di yung bacteria na yun, meron rin. O, so positive yan. Parang gano'n ang, ang ginawa nila. So, that's not a good thing. So, every part that they got would be positive. And that's a very good peer review. It's published. Uh, is it true that there, even the maker there, of the back, the, is it true that even the maker of the test says that it's not reliable, as he said? The inventor well, well the ano naman yun, uh, because yung yung gising yung inventor nung ano uh, the process of trying to amplify it he says it's an amplification method it's not a diagnostic method so yeah. i think he's right naman pero syempre namatay na nga siya he, he could not comment on what's exactly happening on the covid test but but as akin destruction yun eh sa akin the real it's here we can see that flood yung nilang to identify the virus we see also they're overusing amplification by increasing the maximum cycle thresholds to 40 and above. That is very wrong also because as I mentioned earlier, you, you over amplify things, you will hear noise and you will say, oh yeah, that's it. Yung pala, aso sa labas na So that, that's what over amplification would, would do. Okay. And besides, I read that, uh, yeah, I, I read that uh, on average, this, I th uh, this is a paper from three epidemi epidemiologists. Uh, uh, yeah, that I read that on average, a human body contains 380 trillion trillion viruses plus 30 trillion bacteria. So that's uh, the entire body is practically composed of uh, trill not not even billions but trillions of viruses and bacteria. So adding just one or two is, doesn't make a sense, doesn't make a difference. It also shows that the human body is a perfect, what, a perfect machine that keeps on evolving, keeps on mutating. That's why stories like a new virus has mutated and therefore dangerous. Come on, it's not only the virus that mutates, it's only the human body that mutates. Actually, the human body is saying, come in guys, come here and we might, we might tame you, we might even kill you. Yeah, that's what that's with regards to sinasabi nila, man. New variant of this virus that came out, so we better be scared about it. But in in actual evolutionary terms or survival of the fittest, the so virus, ang fittest is the one that would not kill its host. Because if you kill the host, you die. So yes. in fact, it might be a new variant. It could be a true mutant vi uh, virus, but it could actually be weaker. And two good examples of that are SARS, uh, SARS virus, which is a co coronavirus, and the MERS virus, also a coronavirus. Where are they now? Diba? Parang nawalay. They say it's still out there, but it has it has become less uh, uh, dangerous to the host. What are the chances? So it could be happening to this virus as well. Doc, what are the because chances? Survival that, what are the chances, Doc, that it's, uh, the chances it's more of, virulent than, than of it being more virulent? Uh, it's possible. Kaya lang it goes against the survival of the fit of right. the of, of the virus. Why would a virus uh, thrive? Kung pinapatay niya yung host. 
What Most do, likely it will not thrive because it's not the host. What explains why? If, if the host survives, because if the host survives, then I will continue to reproduce to more more right. hosts. Right. If my host dies, it can no longer be contagious. So most likely a, a variant would be less con uh, deadly, but now they're saying more 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 uh, contagious. More contagious. That, was my but that needs to be proven. Hindi kasi pwedeng basta basta i declare mo lang na more more contagious. And but the fear really is about one, being deadly. Yeah. And I think one more thing to add also, no. It doesn't mean that if there's a variant in UK, eh yung variant will also be already in the Philippines. I think that's one thing that you know people do not understand or see, kasi they read na oh by new variant so think na oy this will be in the Philippines soon also parang there's no sense wala kang flight sa puntang UK tsaka pabalik eh <laughs> Yeah so, so it also means well that the vaccines will not work that's also another thing So will ah, they stop you, using you the vaccine never, but you will never hear that. You will ne never hear them saying that it will not work. Is it the new uh, variant? Dr. Fossey is an uh, epidemiologist and a researcher of, of uh, HIV. And the HIV virus has been there for the past three or four decades. And until now, there is no uh, clear, safe, and effective no. virus, vaccine against virus. So vaccine. how come that they yeah. can say that there's a... Yeah. Sa HIV virus, palpak ng sila. Yeah. Bakit hindi lang sabihin na successful sila ngayon? <laughs> yeah. Well, HIV though is a special kind of virus. Kasi it uh, attacks yung, uh, the one that produce, uh, produces antibodies. So it's, it's typically difficult virus to make a vaccine for. All right, let me, let's just say hi to Helen, a uh, friend of our fr friend of mine from uh, Facebook. Hi, Helen. Uh, everyone's uh, free to send in their uh, questions or comments for our doctors or our two economists here. Uh, where else? Uh, what else have we not covered? Uh, or, or let's go back to a recap of uh, the earlier show, which uh, got cut. Uh, docs and our two economists. Uh, yeah, we, we we can talk about your vaccine, Ren. Huh? Uh, I've read a lot already on the vaccine. Uh, so that's a very interesting topic because uh, they had claimed, one company claimed 95%, some claimed 90%, right. and one company oh. uses RNA replication, so it would produce, ano. so to me, uh, yung the way you produce a vaccine may not really matter, it could just look like it's a bad thing, but of course, it's an experimental uh, vaccine, parent. So we, you have to finish the trials. That's for me. But the second thing, I think, ninoloko tayo with regards to yung sa ninety-five percent success. Kasi ganito yon. When I read the paper, it mentions that okay, you are protected because you did not have symptoms, and we also tested your tao nating T cell. Uh, response. So T cell response doesn't mean you will produce antibodies. You will be re able to recognize a virus and prevent symptoms. So you don't test nila. So sinabi, oh look, about ninety five percent of people uh, produce T cells, and therefore we are successful ninety five percent of the time. But they did not wait until ilang barito sa mga natest nila magpo-produce ng antibodies itself. Which is what we want because antibodies will actually kill and prevent deaths. So what I'm saying is they are successful 95% of half what you need. So what would half of 95% be? 47% successful? Di ba? Parang ganun eh. But again, siyempre, you don't want just no symptoms. In fact, Fauci was asked nga kung it will prevent uh, yung, yung severe reactions. He could not answer a direct answer to that because, because he knew knows. of the study. <laughs> it's too early to oh, know. Nobody really knows kung talaga it will prevent. It just prevents yung one or two symptoms and that, that is what they consider the success. Oh. And it does produce T-cells. Kaya lang, mukha, mukha ng marami ng tao may T-cells eh. 
Because yeah. tests have been done and mukhang wala pong antibodies, pero they, they think the reason maraming hindi nagkakasakit is because a lot of people already have T-cells, uh, yung tinatawag na immune response, T-cell immune response. And good thing, the FDA on November, last November came out with a test to check on this uh, T-cell response. There's now a kit you can buy the para mas madali na gawin yung T-cell. And I think it was designed for the vaccine. <laughs> Kasi dati, sabi na, oh, it's successful. Pero pag inantibody test ka, walang ma-detect. So how can they claim successful? Now, they made a test to measure T-cells. Oh, look, it produces T-cells. We're successful. Para bang, ano, gumawa ka ng success, pero yung measure of success, ginawa mo rin. <laughs> diba? Para, para so, dati, hindi mo mapuprove yan eh. Doc, how you should... change the score. <laughs> you change the rules, you change the score. <laughs> Doc, yeah, in concerned. fact, many rules have changed. Even who will get vaccinated? Hmm. Nagugulat ako sa amin eh. Nagugulat ako sa mga doktor who are so proud that they're going to get injected. I'm okay with that. Siyempre, parang big event. But hmm. before, we were taught, si kami ni Dr. Homer Lim, most doctors, we were taught that the one that you should give priority to are the ones who will, get, who will die from this disease, who will get sick from this disease. Sila ang priority. Now, yes, priority din naman ng mga doktor. I'm not saying hindi priority. But if it's not deadly to the young and healthy doctor, syempre, unahin ko syempre yung matatanda, yung magkakasakit. I, I have a mother who is uh, 82 years old, who's diabetic. If they tell me, Dr. Agbeani, you can have the vaccine. Eh, sagot ko doon, eh, bakit yung nanay ko hindi pa siya pwede magkaroon noon? Eh, siya yung nga mamamatay. Hindi naman ako, kasi, although I'm 55, I'm at risk. I will still give my vaccine to my mother. So why should I be okay. proud to show you that I'm having the vaccine when mo more than a million other elderly and sick are not able to get it? And, and here's another risk. Remember that the pharmaceutical companies producing the vaccine are free from right. legal, from prosecution. Right. They have legal yeah, immunity. Correct. That raises the risk even further. Right. Uh, apart from that, and, and, the... and I think there's also a plan na i-inject pati mga bata. Mm. So they're also trying to prove that children can die from this virus and they're contagious and therefore they should be injected too. So it, I could really see a big pharma issue about this, trying to enlarge their their people who they, who needs to be in, in, injected. But, but, apart but from what that... did we learn from the ano, flu vaccine? Before, mga 1980s, ang flu vaccine, 60 and above, and yung mga 5 years old and below. Then, as time progressed, naging ano na ngayon, 50 and above na. Pinal pinalalaki nila yung bibigyan ng flu vaccine. <laughs> Doc, my so concern would be if, now, we're, if, we're, nila. if we're giving you the vaccines and you you wind up uh, as the guinea pigs, if it if it goes wrong, we lose our frontliners. Yeah, yeah we well, experimental pa nga. Correct. I'd rather not experiment but, on the doctors who will be healing the ones who really need it. Hindi naman, hindi naman. They actually, kasi pwede mo naman sabihin na are we going to experiment on the elderly and the vulnerable? Hindi, hindi na naman. But it applies to all. That being an experimental thing, talagang dapat matest muna sa, you know, general population, so to speak. But I do not agree na sabihin mo na agad, these are the rules. Once it's ready to roll out, priority muna mga doktor. You know, that seems, yay, yay, mga doctors. Para, para marketing play. Eh. Dama. Yeah. Saka, di ba, Doc, uh, there, there's no, um, there's no uh, such thing as a one-size-fits-all. Like, for instance, even for medicine against cancer. So, uh, let's say, uh, person one, two, three, and four, they have all uh, prostate cancer. But you cannot say that uh, the... Uh, person may have prostate cancer with diabetes, and person B is prostate cancer with hypertension, uh, etc. So you cannot say that the, there's only one um, sure uh, medicine against prostate cancer that can apply for all. This does not work the case. Uh, there's no such thing as one size fits all. Like, same for vaccine. Yes. You cannot say that yes. a vaccine yes. that can apply for you, for the elderly, mm. right, or with commodities, will apply to everybody. Yes, and again, the, is the Philippines a good candidate for this vaccine? By country lang, ah. Yeah. I would go for all the countries with high uh, death rates per million. And they would be Europe, they would be North America. Sige, gamitin nyo kasi ang taas ng death rates nyo, eh. 
Kami nga sa Philippines, mababa nga ang ating uh, death per million. So, wh- why should we even be considered for it? Because apparently, they're telling us, if you don't have the vaccine, you will have the lockdown. If you don't have zero cases, you, you won't have school. So, you must have the vaccine. So, nagkar- nag- nag- iba na naman yung rules. Kailangan pala zero cases para mag-open ang schools. That is really such a sad, sad thing because I remember four months ago, five months ago, they already rules how to stop lockdown. And in these zero cases, ang rules niyan. And this is the WHO and the CDC who mentioned it. Doc, you, you, one of you can tell me if we have any uh, cases at all in the Philippines of uh, child death due to, due to COVID. The actual numbers of child death, I... I'm I'm actually trying to get it. Hindi siya madali makuha kasi yung specific cases yan eh. Normally, the Philippines would come out with data like this two years after. Okay. Normally. So, but maybe this time they'll come out at uh, end of the year. I remember seeing maybe a headline or two, but I didn't read the, the fine print. That was many months ago. So if, if, if they're saying that we must vaccinate the children, what is the data on which they're basing this decision? Correct, session? correct. I don't think there's data to say that. And uh, remember no, when no I was data. watching per case, ano? Yeah. I was watching per case. Mga nung, ano pala tayo, 1,000 cases pa lang. I saw one child who died. Okay. But that was a long time ago. You're right, Mari. But uh, it should have been, it could have been no documented. If comorbidities. But, we, we have yeah, no yeah. but I think what we, we have to also note no, for vaccines for the coronavirus Lahat ng studies are all 18 and above. Not no studies on 18 and below. So that's very important to note. No? So I don't yeah. think uh, anybody will be recommending. Hopefully, hopefully, and nobody will be recommending a vaccine for, for those under know. 18 years old. Correct. They're going to prescribe it as a. They're they're going to require it for, as a health passport or a health visa. Yeah, that, that's 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 the, that's the that's worrying crazy. part. That's the worrying part. That's really pero, pero, very worrying. Pero yung ko, Homer, kung health visa. So if I had been diagnosed with with a positive test for RT PCR, do I get the passport? No, the the passport is if you have to get your vaccine. You get the vaccine. That's, yeah, I know, I you know. Get the pero vaccine. Diba vaccine yeah, means. Yeah. Uh-oh. means that you have some kind of infection which drove your immunity. And no, no. I'm what they're you, saying is... The virus itself. No, no, no. Because what they want is a vaccine passport, meaning they can trace that you had the injection, not the infection. I understand. I understand Uh-oh. that. But I'm saying it is not a logical passport. If you don't give me the passport, if I had an RT-PCR passport, yes. <laughs> yan na naman yung, do- yung bell. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Pero Happy that's bad. that's really sorry, sorry. But that's <laughs> real strong <laughs> analysis si Pacquiao. <laughs> but that's the real problem, though. What what for those? Because if you already had a infection, are you supposed to get a a, a vaccine after you already had the infection? I think you should not, right? Because right. yeah, that's right. that's another issue that we have to look at. You know, not everyone should be getting the vaccine, especially those who already had uh, a previous infection. And it's getting even stranger. I, I, I remember reading somewhere, somebody was saying, okay, you have the vaccine already, but you must maintain the mask. You must maintain social distancing. You must keep the lockdowns. What was the... What are we waiting for? The, the, the reason, the reason, the reason for that was... Yeah, precisely. Because the very reason was the vaccines were effic- efficacious, meaning effective in preventing you to have a severe form of infection it does not say that you will prevent you from having the infection that's that's also one of the things that's so uh strange if you do early treatment you will not have severe symptoms so if you don't have vaccines you will not have severe symptoms so why can't we do early treatment right so so many questions if you have the vaccine, though, you will not have symptoms. Kasi nga, yun ang, uh, yun ang oh. efficacy nila. No, actually, Dr. Fauci said it himself. He he said, you will still have symptoms. You still may but pass the virus. Less symptoms. But oh. it will be you time. might still have symptoms. You might still pass the virus. But you will yun not problema. have a severe form of infection. 
eh, Fauci said it himself very clearly. So, it, it, so what's the what's the use of this vaccine? Because nga, when when you you do a trial of vaccines, you have to measure antibody response, and they already now produce this test, uh, neutralizing test. So it will soon be available everywhere because it's is an easy test to do. So they didn't have to have that before. So it should be done to prove efficacy. But again, I'm not happy with the neutralizing test. Kalawa talaga antibody test. Because neutralizing test hindi pa talaga kompleto yun eh. We have a comment. Let's just bring in the comment from uh, Polo Shirt Samurai. Says, parang climate change lang pala. Sabi nung dating taga-NASA, sinusukat daw nila sa sobrang taas or something kaya natural, mainit ang magiging reading. Any comments there? <laughs> Any climate scientists among you? <laughs> the climate follower. Okay, Alan says, uh, in reference to the vaccine discussion, no thanks, I'd rather allow my body to respond to the virus. Which brings us, uh, <laughs> Helen also follows that up with, by saying, Fauci, my Actually, opinion, that's not a bad attitude. That's a good attitude. Uh, okay. Uh, now, Kung, yes, you're, you're really strong anyway. You don't have comorbidities. You you, you mm-hmm. may not actually need the vaccine. Kasi lalo na sa atin, napakababa naman ng ano, uh, death rates. And, and apparently, we already know. Right, but as Dr. Homer pointed out, Doc, if you don't have a uh, vaccine passport, then you don't get to travel. So you may yeah, be... that's the abnormal part. That's the abnormal may, part. We, we may even not, reach herd immunity. No one will be able to travel because it's, it's not allowed unless you have a vaccine passport. This is this is straight from ano, ah, Secretary Teddy Loxin tweeted this himself, saying that if you don't have a vaccine passport, you will not be able to travel. He put it in his Twitter account. That's got to be discrimination. But you know that Teddy comes out with these things so often, right? Okay, uh, one more comment from Helen. She says, uh, Fauci, in my opinion, is an idiot. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I don't disagree. <laughs> but, you know, what, what if... Um, what, you, you're aware that... My, I, mean, I mean, I went to India, and in order to go to India from the Australia... I had to either take an anti-malaria vaccine or a doxycycline cycline uh, prophylaxis, which I chose, right? Uh, these are, are there any problems going that path, saying, okay, if you don't want the vaccine, then take the prophylaxis, which in this case would be the Zelenko protocol or the ivermectin. Wouldn't that good, be a good fair point, option? Jeff. But point. Yeah, the problem is they, re- they yeah, refuse to acknowledge that there are Especially if you go to a country with high... Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was just saying that. So if you go to a country with high prevalence, you have a country with high numbers or overwhelm hospitals or high death rates, that is a very good option. Give prophylaxis as you go. That's yeah. a very good... But for example, if you're coming to the U.S., going to the Philippines, na parang, you know, we're actually the safer country compared to the U.S. That, that might ne- not be necessary. In fact, tayo pang magsabi, I think you should not bring the virus here. But again, endemic na rin naman sa Pilipinas. I don't actually believe in such concept. The problem, Doc, is that we're limited in, as to the numbers of, um, of scientists and quote-unquote experts who accept that there are prophylaxis. There are so many doctors Agreed. out there who re- reject hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin, etc. Uh, and so much as we can, we tried, di ba, Dr. Homer? We really tried, yeah. but we're still yeah. trying. We're, we're not stopping. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, we're, the data is so easy to access. Right. Yeah. Ayaw lang talaga pindutin. Pipindutin na lang, ha? Tut, ayun na. Nakikita na. Even here, know, still, ayaw, I'm trying to volunteer. I'm trying to volunteer for the prophylaxis. I even said I'm willing to pay for it and afterwards be exposed to the disease. Wala. Walang gustong pumikap. <laughs> Are you are you on a socialized medicine uh, system? You know, we we are we are on a socialized benefit, but then if they're getting volunteers for a vaccine, why can't they get volunteers for a prophylactic? <laughs> it's right? too cheap. It's only logical. <laughs> it's too cheap to get a prophylaxis. Not money to be made. Okay, uh, uh, ongoing uh, ongoing studies on prophylaxis. Eh. Tama di ba, Homer Lim na Doctor Lim? May mga ongoing mm, prophylaxis kasi there's still prophylaxis a lot of studies are very large. It's, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, those are should be very large studies kasi to prove prophylaxis 
eh, kailangan na prevent mo at, at least one, di ba? Pero to get one case is so hard na nga eh. Ganun kay to prove prophylaxis in, in COVID is so hard. Go ahead, Dr. Homer. I think uh, I think that's that's the same thing with doing the vaccines, even vaccines, no? Getting people to be uh, exposed to the virus becomes less and less. So, I mean, honestly, how they did the study, uh, ano yung ex level of exposure of those who were vaccinated versus those who were not vaccinated? I mean, that's those are real questions that we should be asking, and we don't really have that data. We only have data from what these drug companies have been uh, giving us so we should get a real uh, you know real non biased uh, trial na walang ano walang funding from corporations so that we get an Agreed. unbiased results Agreed. that is what Agreed. you know fact, that is what is not being uh, being emphasized no funding from corporations fact, kunyari, we, we do a funds? study here in the philippines if we do a study in the philippines for vaccination for example if you took 100,000 people, half blind, both blinded, 50,000 may vaccine, 50,000, akala nila may vaccine sila. It's even very probable that none of these two will get sick kasi ma mababa naman ang ating cases eh. So you cannot prove that the vaccine will work in the Philippines. It's actually very possible na mangyari yun. Tapos pagdating ng vaccine, oh you see, our cases are going down because of the vaccine. Of course not. Talaga mababa na yung cases natin, pababa na. Okay, Helen has a question. She says, uh, what about hydroxychloroquine, zinc, and vitamins? That's the Zelenko protocol that uh, Joffrey, Sir Joffrey mentioned earlier. But uh, you want to discuss that a little bit more, Dr. <coughs> Homer? What about hydroxychloroquine, zinc, and vitamins? Yeah, so the, the study by you know, Dr. Zelenko was uh, hydroxychloroquine with zinc, azithromycin, as well as vitamin C, and vitamin C. So with this uh, protocol, no, we, he, which he did as an outpatient also, early outpatient, uh, the studies have consistently shown to prevent hospitalization and death by up to 74%. So 74, that's three-fourths. So three-fourths of the time, you will get better and you won't be hospitalized or die from the virus. So I think... I mean, I don't know why, you know, doctors still are so adamant in saying that there is no uh, study or evidence that it does not work. So I think they just need to open up their minds and, you know, try not to follow uh, what people tell them. Rather, they go and really read up and, you know, make up their own opinions, not base it on other people's uh, opinions, uh, you know, that it is not effective. So I think, you know, doctors should start really be reading and understanding the nitty gritty stuff and, you know, make their own decision, not based on what so called quote and unquote experts tell them, you know. Well, speaking of such an expert, uh, Francis mentioned earlier that Dr. Salvania said remdesivir is a good solution, is a good. Uh, treatment for C19. So he is now saying that World Health Organization is a liar because World Health Organization said that remdesivir is not effective in hospitalized or severely critical COVID patients. So what is the? Guess, you just mentioned seventy-four percent in the in in uh, in hydroxychloroquine patients. Uh, uh, what is the? Yes. Do you know what the figure is for remdesivir? The remdesivir does not prevent death. Period. Oh That's why WHO said that it is not effective because it does not prevent you from dying. So is it possible that Dr. Yes, Salvan is not aware of the WHO study? Impossible, impossible that he does not know. Impossible. That's impossible. Okay. Ano, di ba, Dr. Lim? In fact, oh. the study at the utmost remdesivir can shorten the number of days of hospitalization. At most. Yes. Oh, only those who will recover. But those who will not recover will have no benefit whatsoever except their emptying pockets. <laughs> Just a second, the gentlemen. We have a, another comment from uh, Helen. Helen says, I had the virus in January last year. 
last year, Helen. Uh, can you clarify? 2019? I uh, didn't know what it was, but my husband and I self-quarantined. I will be 70 next year, which means she's obviously in the high-risk category. But uh, my brother-in-law just told me a few months ago, a couple of months ago, maybe less than a month ago, that uh, he actually was diagnosed with something that the doctors in the U.S. Uh, didn't they didn't know what it was to be honest, and that was in I believe he said it was August of last year, so that kind of tracks with what although there's a big gap between January and August, if this has been around that long since January of last year or August of last year, what explains why we haven't heard about it until now? Why why did it explode with Wuhan? I think Actually, it has think to do. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The homework. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. no, no, no. I mean, for me, no, for me, as what other um, other epidemiologists have been saying, like uh, uh, Ma- one of them, Ma- Dr. Uh, Martin Kuldrup, he said himself, what if this virus is similar to the flu virus? It follows the, um, you know, the, the, the cold, uh, the December or climate, the autumn climate, the fall, the winter flu, because... If, the, if they would look, Wuhan or China had the virus last year when they were already in the winter season. So is this a cyclical event? Because remember, even in Europe, during the summer, the spring, the cases were very low. And then when autumn came, winter, then all of the cases went up and gone crazy. Yeah, I actually think the, the, we're detecting... Other viruses as well. Because for example, wasn't it uh, see uh, who is this uh, b- billionaire who did a test himself? He did four tests on himself. So that Elon, Elon, Elon Musk, Elon Musk, and two other tests negative. So para how is that? You can have four different uh, tests and two different results. And apparently, what are the sakit talaga? But it's detecting someone something else. So no, the it, it wasn't with four COVID, different tests. It's, yeah, the prob- it's the, 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 same test, same machine, same yes. nurse, but two <laughs> positive, two negative. So he was yeah. he, he was you know asking that so, question. So my point is the the test is flawed. So yes, we detect tayo even in February. In fact, they, they, they detected it in France, in Spain. They may be detecting different viruses. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, just Other there's, a high bias. there's a high bias for false positives. Is that what you're saying, Dr. Iggy? Yes, correct. correct. That is what it is. So, yes. and But the, the other problem is the symptoms. It's so hmm. nonspecific. CPM fever, headache, colds, cough. It's so nonspecific. Any viral disease could have those. So yes, it's hard to say whether you really got it or not. So even it's still hard to say even if you have tested positive. It is a being that's how I don't trust the RT PCR now. Okay, Helen uh, corrects herself. It was 2020. She had it in January 20 of this year, and she's sorry. The Chinese consulate is two blocks from here. <laughs> and then she says, many people o- over 50 in my complex had the same, and like me, their doctors didn't know what it was. Yeah, that would be really scary. To be honest with you, di ba sa Philippines, you have a flu disease. Hindi naman tinetest eh. Right. I mean, whoever had a influenza test done, you, you'll just be managed in the hospital. And if you have a, a pneumonia caused by secondary bacterial infection, you'll be treated for that. That's how it's done. Hmm. Okay, we were, we were. I don't know if it was this show or the previous show where you were discussing herd immunity talk, <laughs> Why is the in in all their calculations in all their um, scenarios? Why are the uh, pro lockdown people so against the idea of herd immunity? Why can't they believe? Like you're saying, that our case numbers are down. Could that not be due to an improvement in our herd immunity, an increase in herd immunity? Yeah, because um, um, herd immunity sounds so bad, eh, diba? <laughs> For the first. We're not a herd of sheep, you know, <laughs> and we're going to get you all immune by getting you infected. So it sounds so bad. But in fact, uh, wasn't it uh, Dr. Bacatari, Bacatari, who said 
her immunity is like gravity. You cannot deny it. Right. Even vaccination pushes us, pushes us to her immunity. Right. So what, uh, what, getting the disease. If they understand that vaccination gives you a synthetic, uh, man-made herd immunity, why can't they see it happening naturally? Why can't they accept that it happens yeah, naturally? Yeah. And we may already be there. Yeah, because you know, it's a, wala. But yes, walang, yeah, walang pera sa herd immunity. <laughs> you know, how can you justify 20 billion, 50 billion uh, procurement if there is uh, immunity is going to happen anyway, right? It's like climate change. Uh, you will not accept natural climate change of warming, cooling, warming. You will reject nature-made climate change. You will only pro you only entertain man-made climate change because when you have man-made cause, then you have man-made solution. That's where yeah. the, uh, yeah. a lot of uh, plunder would happen. The same for, for herd immunity. And I think that the best yeah. example yeah. of immunity is uh, the Spanish flu. Yeah. No? So you have now. This is how it is. You know? the, the ideal way to go about it is how to go to herd immunity as safe as possible. Yeah. Right. And there are many ways to do that. It could be the natural way. But meron konting uh, focus protection. Yun yung natural way, but you use focus protection. So as you allow the healthy people to get the, ano, you protect those who are, are, who are vulnerable or, or elderly because we already know who they are who will die. I'm not even against vaccines, but they have to be proven efficacious and safe because baka madagdagan pa yung risk ng vaccine kung hindi naman pala efficacious and safe. In fact, there might be this idea that, oh, na-vaccinate na ako, I can do whatever I want. That also is a problem. So people it think, doesn't yeah, work that okay. way. It doesn't work that way okay. every time. Kasi hindi naman siya, I, I actually believe that when the actual tests come out, baka 50% Ano lang siya, effective. Kasi very ideal yung sinite nilang situation eh. Tinest nila yung T-cells, not yung, B, yung actual B-cells. So they're actually setting themselves for a fall if they if they trust the vaccine and actually don't do anything else. Yeah. And it's a 50-50 shot. Yes, yes. And then again, what if marami na nga na meron ng immunity? What is the purpose of giving vaccines na? But if it's already there, our numbers are showing it. Our, our positivity rate is dropping. Our death rates are dropping. It looks like we're there. Almost. I'm not saying perfectly there. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay, to our two economists, uh, maybe you can explain. Uh, maybe I should be asking the doctors this because it's an issue of psychology. Why is everyone so accepting of the situation? Why is nobody worried? <laughs> Apparently that we're, we've been locked down for nine, ten months and... Well, like Francis was saying, there's a lot of people on the streets. I was just out on the streets. It's just, traffic is bad, but that still does not mean that the economy is moving. There are some people who, are, well, it's a large chunk of uh, the population that is not getting to go to work. <laughs> We're putting Doc Iggy to sleep here. <laughs> so, no, no, you want to jump in, sir? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, like what uh, Doc, Doc Iggy mentioned. Um, Herd immunity is such a bad news for them if your purpose is a, a racket, no? scum, uh, a large scale. Because, as I said, uh, you cannot justify 20 billion, 50 billion, even 100 billion pesos worth of procurement if there might be herd immunity anyway. So you have to, you have to, you have to reject and and even demonize herd immunity and continue the continue the hysteria. Uh, 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 there's a pattern actually because uh, uh, this kind of lockdown, nine, nine and a half months of lockdown, has no precedent. Uh, I think that uh, first two weeks uh, is unjustifiable. People would accept it because it was uh, people are scared. But it has been nine months already, and there was no legislation, Congress legislation, no executive order from the president that would justify the indefinite lockdown and even threats by the police that they will arrest people in their houses if they were party, right? There's no, there's no uh, legal basis for that, and yet they're doing it. Uh, they have this infinite lockdown for nine and a half months without the president. They're doing it. That means they will do it again next time. Like for example, you will just have another swine flu, cat flu, I mean, you know, rodent flu, squirrel flu, whatever flu, flu, and they will say, oh, another lockdown. Why? Because they're smelling maybe another round of uh, racket. You know, oh, there's a the vaccine for for COVID. We have a uh, 
we did another vaccine for squirrel flu or rodent flu, no? <laughs> May, may ask you nga, uh, Geoffrey saka Mr. Oplas, why is the opposition not questioning that? Yes. We do have a fairly good opposition in this country. Why are they not questioning that? <laughs> well, <laughs> why, did they, why is the opposition is not, why is the opposition not questioning uh, what they call the this? Uh, uh, the emergency powers. Place? Yeah, the emergency powers. Why did they question how how come it's already nine months? I how can such an emergency power continue that long? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I think that uh, partly there's also ignorance on the part of the opposition, but at the same time, mm. I think that uh, um, well, um, yeah, partly ignorance, and I think that maybe they they might. You might be getting some benefits, political or whatsoever, from the independent lockdown. Politics in the Philippines is strange. Actually, I'm not sure if Duque is administration or opposition. Administration. Because even uh, Vice President <laughs> Lenny Robredo said, Duque is not the problem. And I go, okay. <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> even the, Getting rid of him will not So This is what I remember. She said, Getting rid of Duque will not solve the problem. What does she believe the uh, okay. problem is? If it's not well, I I, I don't know exactly, but I I remember I was still supportive of her when she said that the problem in in housing is not logistics. We have the resources; it's in systems and procedures. But that's where it it all ended. And I think she had gotten it right. Maybe if she stuck to that storyline. She wouldn't have been, you know, uh, had that drop in popularity. But uh, it really is systems and procedures. It really is looking at pers- looking at public policy from the perspective of how public policy should be made. We should look at the. We should start with the right fundamentals, like in public health, it's dignity of risk and then duty of care, where which begins with the mutual respect for that dignity of risk. We also have to look at the risks that I enumerated, like the primary agent risk, uh, moral hazard risk, meaning because now, like for example, the particular, the legal immunity of the pharma companies from prosecution for their, for their vaccine mm. increases what you call a moral hazard risk. I will take a greater risk because someone else will pay for it if I, things go wrong. So who, yeah, for, for, for example, in the U.S., diba, Dr. Paul Rand is really going against what uh, Fox is saying. Diba? In the U.K., I, I think may, in the Australia, but but don't you notice that it's a little bit more? In Australia, it's a little bit more. Australia, our cases are now lower than Japan and South Korea. When but before, the opposition, I mean, I mean the opposition... Why, why is there so little opposition from politicians when 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 there is a good reason to stop it? I want to well, know. I, I think I think the only politicians with sort of a libertarian perspective would uh, would have that kind mm. of uh, audacity to question because uh, if you're just a put opposition because you want to be in a uh, uh, big government and therefore you're opposition because you are not in the in the administration, but next time you want to retain the big government. And I think about yeah. the public policy, I think the problem is there's too much public policy when in fact it should be private policy. Like, you know, you're taking care of your body, um, uh, preventing you from taking out your children to uh, outside and governor. In the name of public policy, you are prevented by the government to do that. There's too much already that's over extending Absolutely. Overextending the, the role of the government. Right now, uh, say, so far, the opposition that they hear is see Manny Pacquiao, who's asked uh, Duque to, uh, uh, to resign. Anyone else? Well, you know, here's the problem. Uh, I'll offer the perspective that the, the Philippines, like many other countries, are, are subject to a commercialized, highly commercialized electoral system. And... <clears throat> When when elector when electoral systems are commercialized, naturally, legislation will be commercialized. It's logical. And 
if you were an opposition and you want to get into public office, <clears throat> would you like to offend a potential sponsor? donor, supporter, sponsor? For example, it the would make big you pharma. Think twice. Yeah, big pharma, whether it's big pharma, whether it's telecommunication. Telecommunication, yes. See? <clears throat> so so we, we don't really have a real opposition. Because Manny Pacquiao is a billionaire. That's why he doesn't need them. Yeah, that's why he can dare say, resign, Duque. But nobody else can say that. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, in, the, in the case of uh, Manny Pacquiao, opposition is not exactly on the uh, lockdown per se, but only on yes. the leadership, the, the, is the way it is managed. But in terms of yeah. uh, opposition to the indefinite lockdown, to the extended door of police that they can threaten people to arrest in their house for partying, uh, Manny Pacquiao did not really oppose that. Correct. Kay Correct. Doke lang sa medyo opus. May isa na nga lang, half-hearted pa. <laughs> <laughs> That's why uh, the, the real opposition should really enough. come from civil society because what we are seeing is uncivil society, which meaning government, uncivil society overstretching its hand and power. That's why it is important that the civil society, the volunteer society, should really assert their their voice. Where are they? Oh. Sir Nonoy, where no, is civil this society? Is it. We are it. We are it, Mary. There's five of us here. Oh. Francis would yeah, make a six. It's the beginning. Okay. Lenny Robredo, I guess, would have been, uh, should be speaking for civil society. Uh, like Doc Iggy says, uh, the opposition should be speaking for civil society. He's right. No one else is speaking. There's something wrong. There's yeah. something seriously wrong. Either everybody's because believing the, the... I think, the, you know, what? one thing I think we have to always put in mind is the shock and awe of how the, the administration handled the ABS-CBN shutdown. I think that really created a, 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 a feeling or a sense of fear of, you know, of the opposition, whether it's political whether it's from the media, you know, and also now with the anti-terrorism law that you can be tagged as a communist, then you're dead. <laughs> Everybody there <is> speechless. <laughs> but it's true, right? <laughs> yeah, because, because kasi, Mari, all of us here, we're already convinced of the science. Mm. But apparently, the, the this information... Yeah doesn't get passed along Correct. they don't they yes. don't want to believe it because i there is a suspicion that thomas C. joffrey it is not a popular thing to do they will it, it will not make them win an election to do the science side to, to do to follow the science so to speak especially when you're up against the mainstream media because the mainstream media is starting the same yes yes there's no one at all speaking they well, don't believe even the term science or lockdown, I, I would I would consider I would consider it as a, it's actually fifty percent political science, thirty percent military science, and only about twenty percent medical science. The so called science behind the lockdown. I think the twenty percent is even questionable. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little too yeah. high. <laughs> so it's actually, about politics. If you now. ask me, uh, who is the who should speak for lockdowns? Hindi actually infectious disease doctors. It should Maybe not be Salvania. Because they're infectious disease doctors, they manage individual patients. It should be public health experts. I want to hear from the public health experts. Where are they? During the interview. Is it Duke one? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. It's what not. Is it's not. Uh, <laughs> Pero Dr. Lim, uh, UST on. Also? <laughs> <laughs> Ay, tinatakwil na nga ata ako ng UST, ha? <laughs> Kasi, sabi mo, yung mga taga-UP, yung taga-ano eh, yung sa statistic group. Which brings us to another point. Uh, I think, if I remember this correctly, one of the doctors, uh, I don't remember which one it was, during the launch of the FTF, actually said, we learned all of this in medical school. This is the, oh, about hydroxychloroquine, etc. This is really, really basic, was his, was, his, was his point. What happened between medical school 20, 30 years ago for some of you, and today, where so many of you seem to have forgotten what you were taught, that, and, and uh, Doc Iggy, you, you remember when we had our discussion, you mentioned that when you first heard about uh, um, coronavirus, 
immediately your mind went to hydroxychloroquine. Why would it not have yes, happened? I used for, it. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> why would uh, other doctors not have come to the same conclusion? Why did they suddenly dump what you've known, what you were taught for years? Meron yung tinatawag na eminence-based. So suddenly, an expert started to talk. And so, so I... Okay, so we don't have to do research. The expert has talked already and we will just follow him. <laughs> so that is the, the easy way to do it. Is that the uh, Lancet in this case or is it the who? Deference. No. Right, deference. I'm they talking about the, the expert, local right? doctors who ah, go on, okay. on the news okay. saying that hydroxychloroquine is that in this. Diba? So I don't know research the mga doctor. Well, again, I don't know if you were able to do it this uh, earlier in the in the on the Pocket Blogger show, but uh, would you like to issue a challenge, uh, or have we done that enough yet? Uh, challenge them to a debate for the doctors to discuss the topic of is there are there early yeah. treatment options available or are there not? We saw what a disaster. I will support there. Dr. Homer Lim. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, it's the early. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, man. Okay, okay, doc. Yeah, okay. You go, you go, doc. Go, doc. Oh. I mean, I mean, the early outpatient is not only here in the Philippines or in America. It's all around the world. If you go to the research or the papers on hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin, you will see that the papers are from all over the world. So it's not a it's not a one country thing. It's you know this is a worldwide phenomenon. So. Up until now, why it's, there's still so much uh, resistance, uh, I really don't. I really cannot understand. Out of the context of medicine and science, but if you look at you know the overall view, that suddenly you know it makes sense. So there are other things or other uh, how do you say forces that are you know kind of influencing how people. Um, uh, manage or how people make decisions as to how to treat uh, patients with COVID. Do you remember the name? Uh, sorry, do you remember the name Ignat Semmelweis? Does it ring a bell? Not for me. Okay, okay. in nineteenth century, in the nineteenth yes, yes. century, Ignat Semmelweis was a Hungarian physician, and his main advocacy was after observation and comparing the survival rates of childbirth that may uh, that uh, what they call this uh, handmaidens had a better record than the than the doctors yes. he said yes, he, he right. concluded that washing your hands washing your hands saves lives because the handmaidens were were washing their hands and the doctors condemned him they hated him his, his reward was was first he was fired from a hospital or from one hospital after the other until he went to, into an asylum and died from an infected hand and they refused him the right to wash his hands and that's you can google it i-g-n-a-z that's ignatz semmelweis s-e-m-e-l-w-e-i-s-s -E -S -S. and they've actually so named uh this complex that we're experiencing now, after him, the Semmelweis complex, that experts tend to, you know, when they when they when they encounter an opposition from their convention, they they do the irrational thing of neglecting or ignoring or even condemning through data. And so, I'm not so are you saying story. that uh, we're going to go on to an asylum very soon? <laughs> <laughs> no, fortunately, you, you guys are I will not support alone. You. But Ignat Semmelweis is just one. You. <laughs> but okay. that, that's about it. This, I mean, you know, about this uh, virus debate, no, I, I, my experience is that uh, I have been uh, directly or uh, indirectly challenging the climate alarmist to a climate debate. And you know, uh, every time I use that, no, uh, I say in my, in my column, in my blog, or in some public uh, forum where I was invited, every time I do that, I, I, I take that, uh, the, I, I post that, I only hear one one response, the sound of silence. The meaning, 
people, these people, they are not interested in climate debate. They only interested in climate money. The same for the virus. They are not interested in the virus debate. They only interested about virus money. And you're talking about billions of billions on vaccine alone. Go, going to the climate debate, Doctor. Ako, I'm 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 one of the people who are the who, whom, I'm one of the people whom the masses want to hang to the nearest tree because I told them I refuse to debate. Why? Because I want to concentrate on the solutions that you know based on the principle. If you destroy something, you fix it. If you make a mess, clean it up. And if you take something from nature, you've got to give something back. And and everyone tells me, no, no, you should, you, you should. It's it's the fault of the climate, the climate change uh, skeptics. I said, no, look, look at. The, I said, you're for you're you're. Don't you know that with regard to pro climate change, the biggest promoters of this solution, which is carbon pricing to cap trade and tax, is favored by people who are causing the pollution in the first place. And I have demonstrated to them that, you know, you know what carbon pricing does? First, if you tax it, you pass the cost to the consumer. Right. So, second is if you if you trade it, then you develop financial instruments for the extractive industries to generate more capital to do exploration and extraction. And so I said. It's not going to work. Then they said, well, when we had carbon taxation in Australia, the carbon emission rates fell down by 1% to 2%. And I said, if that's the case per year, you're going to take 100 years before you reach your targets. I said, it's a waste of time. What I, my proposal was always to tax extractive industries, not to tax carbon emissions. Tax extractive industries. Why? Because they will pass on the tax first to downstream industries before they tax a consumer. And the downstream industries won't like that. So they will look for cheaper alternatives than fossil fuel, like or like uh, cassava, like coconut, like sugar, etc. Actually, the main debate in climate is whether it's nature made or man-made. Because if it is nature yeah, made, what all this? What, uh, that's why if you can prove. But I'm avoiding uh, anyway, that just, altogether. Just, I, yeah. Yeah. What I'm, what I want to concentrate really is on solution. Solution. What that, if it is nature made? What is the solution? What is the solution? Yes, if it it's is not nature made, whether it's around. nature made, whether it's nature made or not, we still have to fix what we destroy, and and if that proves that it doesn't change climate that climate then then it means it wasn't man-made maybe that's what they're afraid of but i also point out that is, what, yeah, look at what happened recently because of covid and consumption went down suddenly they could they could see you know in india they could see the himalayas when they could uh, when they, they were surprised that the himalayas were there visible you know uh, Water started uh getting it, clean. Uh, you know the the chairman of First Philippines Holdings, he Piquet Lopez, no, the the owners mm. of those uh, four gas plants in in Batangas. No, the the business is a uh, natural gas. They hate coal because uh, coal is a competitor to the business, uh, the gas business. He wrote, he gave a speech at the MAP Management Association in the Philippines, and he's saying that uh, we need about seven to eight decrease in carbon emission. Uh, in order to reach the so-called uh, climate target. And the COVID mm. global uh, lockdown is uh, resulted about 7 to 8% decline in carbon emission, meaning he's suggesting that we should have global uh, global lockdown every year, every until 2050. <laughs> oh, Can you imagine that kind of uh, really irresponsible, if not idiotic uh, Yeah, uh, that kind of thinking is so narrow. You, have, you indeed, should have indeed. a global lockdown for 20, for until 2050. Can you imagine that? I, I, I tell my friends in the global climate change debate, look, don't worry about the earth. The earth will repair itself. It's humanity you've got to think of. Yeah, that's right. Jeff, okay. Geoffrey, yun yung sinabi niya ni George Carlin. My favorite yeah. comedian. Ah, yeah, yes, yes, the comedian. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes Carlin. comedy does better. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> okay, gentlemen, we've been going for uh, for more than an hour now. Is there any other uh, topic that we need to cover on this show that we have not covered? So far, it doesn't look like Francis is coming back. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, I, I'm not I sure. Think, whether... I think we need to do another show on just you know vaccines and its efficacy and safety and all the the so-called uh, you know whether it's truth or fiction as to do these vaccines really cause uh, damage to our own DNA or not. I think these are things that we okay. need to discuss in the next okay. uh, session. I think that's very important. All right. Ako naman, no more yung ano, I, I really think we should talk about yung risk to children mm. or if they mm. become contagious, if they get, yeah. I think, such a yeah. big agree. factor agree. to decide agree. para magka-face-to-face -to -face school na or not. And I think we're agree. collecting agree. The, the studies already. But I always mm. go back to the root cause of this is the RT-PCR. It's a very, very a hard topic to discuss kasi very, ano siya eh, uh, uh, sort of uh, not familiar science. It's not your common kind of science to study viruses. But it's just the root cause of this whole pandemic, uh, fake pandemic, so to speak. That's going to get you into trouble, Doc. You keep calling it a fake pandemic. <laughs> you, you might, if you have you... corrupted science, we also have corrupted <laughs> uh, Two more comments. No, we, have an, we have an obligation to educate. That's true. That's true. Helen Thomas so thanks, will, says thank you all for this. She also says uh, regarding the um, the uh, discussion on climate change, Helen says agree the original recycling. Then Uj says, uh, Mari, the numbers on children can be retrieved from the DOH data drop. Uh, have you not mm. seen that yet, Doc Igi? Uh, is there? Have you seen the DOH? We tried data? it. Actually, it's not easy to it's not easy to get it in. No, no, you you, you cannot. Way. You cannot get the data drop unless you are registered. So if they see Dr. Iggy Agbayani, okay, cancel. <laughs> You're out. <laughs> She'll use her statistics against us. Helen, uh, Helen says, uh, I'm concerned about the psychological impact on the children. Yes. Is that yes, what you're referring yes, yes. to, Doctor Iggy? Were you referring to the impact on the children of the lockdown? Yeah, or the, the vaccines? Uh, I think that's actually not the top. Uh, problem it's, uh, it's the poor children who who will not get that uh, uh, yung socializing thing diba? yung, and, and some of them don't even have uh, internet or Wi-Fi so they're not getting education okay. period a, a big number of children don't right so I wonder who's who's thinking of the children um, if we, you remember that Latest, um, Actually, she, she Deputy Secretary Liling Briones is really very interested. In it. Much more, we should open up face-to-face uh, -face, uh, uh, in public schools. And what is the DOH response to that? Uh, DOH, mababawa sa ng racket nila. No, but are they officially? The racket is more history, eh, and Deputy President. They, I mean, I think uh, the, I, they just. Yeah. I think they just made a parang a, a how do you say Position. a politically correct statement. We have to study it further. Oh my goodness! Which means uh, what? Another year before they decide. The na inis ako Homer yung sa bulletin eh. DOH came out with the bulletin. Uh, a doctor, they quoted a doctor for saying that there is a published study which shows children are uh, super spreaders. That mm -hmm. doctor quoted the study. So yeah, they're now yeah. using studies, ah. So, so we, pero again, we check the study. It's so flawed; should never be used as a public policy study. Actually, uh, on the economic side, uh, the uh, secretary Carl Chua already announced, uh, I, I think, about three weeks ago, that based on on the 2021 uh, GDP and other macroeconomic projections, the assumption is that they will be locked down. Uh, strict or the record uh, strict or relaxed until the end of 2021 that is the that is their baseline now that's why they cannot say that uh, we should we are supposed to have grow by about 10 percent by next year they're only talking about five to six percent growth because the the assumption is that another 12 months of lockdown whether mild or strict yeah. form of lockdown and, and the worst was i heard the interview of uh, no, uh dr i dr duque he was asked mm. when will you uh, open school 
Uh, as far as I know, only Batanes has zero cases. So is he saying that he will only open schools if there are zero mm -hmm. cases in the Philippines? So we're talking about 20, 23, 22. Yeah. I remember it's similar it's similar to carbon carb to what you call that climate change they want they're targeting zero carbon and i said so what are the plants going to live on oxygen <laughs> <laughs> going back to the discussion on the statistics now dan says nope you can as in get them been doing it since it was made available and been using it to tell friends about it i'll provide you with my excel sheet yeah please drop uh you can drop it i think in the comments uh then uh can you leave i'm, I'm actually not sure use but... francis lopez uh, use francis abram's name <laughs> make sure you really do get kicked out immediately. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, if there's uh, you can reach me uh, just drop uh, drop me a note in the comments and I'll, I'll provide the copy for Helen Helen's asking for a copy as well yes, okay yes. and so and I'll provide it to the doctors who can't get to it <laughs> for some reason or other okay so gentlemen uh, any last words uh, before we close this evening's discussion Ako, meron. Uh, we have got into all those crisis narrative, no? Population crisis, uh, food crisis, hunger crisis, energy crisis, oil crisis, HIV crisis, insidious crisis, plastic crisis, garbage crisis, climate crisis, virus crisis. Uh, we have gotten used to that na parang um, the, the, the crisis means that uh, there's only one solution, and that is government and the multilaterals. There we go. So we have to, they, they have successfully paid us with that uh, uh, garbage that we need more government and multilaterals. And we should, we should, we should learn to question that kind of endless crisis narrative. Where does that begin, though, sir? No, no, it doesn't begin at school. We need to teach it at school that you're not supposed to be dependent on government for everything you need. Yeah, yeah aside from that, um, I think the the lesson from the so-called uh, population crisis or crisis, all of them, hundred percent of them, are wrong. Okay, all the narratives of the crisis situation are wrong, and therefore all the solutions of more government multilateral are wrong. All right. All right, uh, Doc Homer. Well, you know, just uh, when you know, no, you know, I was talking about crisis. You know, I suddenly remember, you know, in crisis, right, in Chinese word for crisis is danger and opportunity. So I think in this uh, pandemic, which is also a big, big crisis, we should be looking at the opportunities of how to get out of this crisis, which we have. We have the tools, we have the science, we have the knowledge on how to break this crisis. I just hope, you know, people will start seeing the light very very soon because we cannot be on a lockdown for the end of right. 2021 that's just too much for absolutely. everyone absolutely Parting Parting words, man, sir joffrey uh one minute Sit for, uh, get sir joffrey I'm saying, well i'll stress it in, in, intimidation vilification all instruments of fear hmm. combining with keeping people ignorant will end up with two things very stupid people and very rich people. <laughs> so what we really need is an education, an educated nation is better than a mandated nation. That's right. We've got to educate and we shouldn't give up. We shouldn't say it's civil society's job because we are civil society as we speak. This is it. We have the ball. We've got to run with it. All right. Well, Don't excellent. give up. Excellent. That's all. Uh, Doc Iggy, uh, see Doc Homer yeah. thrown you the baton. He said it's it's a very terrible pandemic. Okay, <laughs> he said it's a terrible pandemic, Doc Iggy. <laughs> okay, pick it up from there. Well, Doc. well, you know, again talking about crisis, uh, Doctor Homer Lee mentioned opportunity. I think we should also watch for the opportunist. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. They're they're the big group. They they have the control of high high tech things, media, and and, and we better I know watch out for that group because they're, alam na alam nila, they 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 magnify the crisis, 
and they're magnifying their profits. That's right. So the bottom line is gising na Pilipinas. <laughs> Gising na. All right, thank you, gentlemen. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank Thanks to everyone who dropped their comments. Good night. God bless you all. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs>